All right, here's another episode today with uh, Dr. Tim here and Rocky here as well. And yep. we are every single week, heck, seems like almost every day, once yeah. in a while, you know, we're on every other, <laughs> at least on the weekdays, right? Monday through Thursdays, possibly yeah. Friday as well. We're giving people information on how to not only decrease their pain, improve their health, and also their longevity. So we have a wonderful topic that I am really, really excited about today. Rocky, tell us about it. Yeah. So today we're going to continue uh, our series of topics about, you know, starting our journey to lifestyle change and, you know, becoming a better version of ourselves. Now, today we're going to be talking about sleep. Right. Mm. So, yeah, I think that this is the most underrated, you know, pillar of health. Right. Um, you know, we, we often say sleep is for the week, right? Sleep so, is for the week. Yes. Yeah. And uh -huh. in the past, you know, whenever people talk about sleep, um, normally we talk about just, you know, the sleep disorders, right? So, right. but now sufficient sleep is actually being referred to as a key lifestyle behavior. So I guess my first question, Dr. Tam, is what are the key components of sleep? And, you know, why is it important for me to include it in my journey to lifestyle change? You know, sleep is one of the main keys to health. You know, um, a key keys to health is sleep is one of them. Getting enough movement and exercise, one of them. Right making sure your nutrition is right. That's one of them. Mental health is huge. And then your nervous system and musculoskeletal health is huge as well. So yeah. having good sleep is actually one of the five keys to health. And when you look at sleep, if you think about sleep, sleep is when our body is healing and our brain is healing as well. Not only is it just decompressing, but it's the cells are renewing. That's why someone can lay in bed, right? Mm -hmm. They can't fall asleep, but they wake up even though they're physically laying down, but their brain doesn't actually shut down. Mm -hmm. And now they feel like they get up. They're super, super tired. Right. Why is that? The two people, right? One is lay down the same way as the other one. And it's not like they're moving, right? But the other mm -hmm. person falls asleep and the other person doesn't. There's not, right? That's because while you sleep, your body and cells are renewing. That's how your body heals. See? So mm -hmm. digestion happens during that time. You're digesting your food throughout the night, right? That's why when you mm -hmm. sleep, when you eat really full the night before, sleep isn't going to be good because mm -hmm. your body spends a lot of energy just digesting. You see? So mm -hmm. uh, sleep is essential. It's part of healing. And if you're, our body is usually have millions of cells turning over, dying and renewing every minute. Mm -hmm. So if you don't sleep right, your cells don't renew correctly. And now what happens is your body ages a lot faster. Promise you that. Right. Exactly. So, and we know now that, you know, sleep affects numerous tissues and organ systems. Mm -hmm. um, it influences our mood and even, you know, how we think, how we function during the day and ultimately impacts our overall health and well-being. So mm -hmm. it's also been proven that inadequate sleep increases our risk of developing chronic conditions oh, yeah. um, like obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and uh, sleep deficiency can also cause significant impairment uh, when it comes to our cognitive function, um, even our emotional behavior and, you know, our mental resilience, right? And I always knew that we need sleep, but it didn't really, I didn't really know why, you know, we need it aside from not feeling terrible and exhausted. So um, right. now, now we know that. Mm -hmm. One of the big hormones when you don't get enough sleep, mm -hmm. people are fatigued. And if someone's fatigued and they still have to go, like they're go, 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 but they're fatigued, mm -hmm. right? 
Right. So what happens? Your body, it doesn't just stop functioning. You can still function. But what it does is that it releases a stress hormone called cortisol. Mm -hmm. Now, I could talk about cortisol. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But cortisol ramps up and there's an organ in your body that makes a lot of the cortisol. It's called the adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. Adrenal glands is sitting right above your kidneys. So what happens is when your kidneys are stressed or your, when your adrenal glands are stressed, now what happens is you end up with, in the long run, adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is real. Mm -hmm. That's usually the first system that breaks down in a person because most diseases and a lot of inflammatory problems is caused by stress. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have enough sleep, you're going to stress a it's lot. Stress. Right. And when you stress a lot, you release cortisol. Mm -hmm. Now, right. when you release cortisol, you also cause insulin to rise. Mm -hmm. When insulin rises, you store more sugar and fats. And, and you ultimately, you become insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. right. So they kind of lead one to another. To another. Uh -huh. It's all interconnected. <laughs> it's all interconnected. <laughs> right. Yeah. And according to CDC, um, supposedly, um, you know, a person who's aged be between 18 to 25 should get at least seven hours of sleep. And surprisingly, um, it's actually just, I think, two thirds of the population who, who, who gets, you know, seven hours of sleep. Now, I guess a big question here is, um, you know, yes, I'm getting enough sleep, right? I'm getting seven hours of sleep, but how do I know that, you know, I'm getting good at good sleep? So let's talk about, you know, the quality of sleep. So there's the quality of sleep where you want to spend part of your time in REM sleep, non-REM sleep, right? Um, there's multiple ways to track your sleep. Now, there are iPhone watches that a lot of people wear, right? There's mm -hmm. the Fitbits that people wear. There are gold standards where you go to a, do a sleep study and they hook you up with leads and, you know, like 12, 15, 20 leads just all over your brain and your heart and everything. Um, but there's also a ring that you can wear, okay? Mm -hmm. It's called the aura ring, O U R A, aura mm -hmm. ring. And what this does is that the aura ring is one of the most accurate rings that someone can buy to ultimately track their sleep. So that's what they can actually use to track their sleep is using the aura ring. And because the, the way that they have it on your finger, the technology in it. When they are testing the aura ring against the iWatch, the Apple Watch, or mm -hmm. the Fitbits it's versus the gold is. standard, the aura ring is one of the best ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, you know, they, they come out with newer versions on a regular basis. And in a sleep study that was uh, done on the ring, Mm -hmm. on 2019 they found that it was quite you know tested quite well so mm -hmm. yeah and that's the thing about health right um you know our technology keeps on advancing almost mm -hmm. you know every day so there's really no excuse to not prioritize your health like you do have a lot of um you know gadgets that you can use to track everything basically right so, so i guess um the next question would be um you know how do we optimize our sleep are there any strategies you know that we can use absolutely mm -hmm. so let's talk about uh in terms of how exercise affects sleep All right so on a regular basis we should be getting about 10,000 20,000 steps a day if we're not getting that many steps a day, well, your body doesn't allow enough exertion and there's not a lot of in release of endorphins. 
because those who are not spending time walking around, they're also spending a lot of time sitting in front of the computer on the screen, which is not necessarily a bad thing as long as you balance it out with something else. During the day, because of, you know, when we're looking at screens, if in the afternoon towards the evening time, right, if you're about to fall asleep, usually, um, let's just say two hours before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then you should be wearing some form of glasses like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones I wear right now, these are for during the day. There are mm -hmm. ones that I wear at night that are orange that blocks out the blue light filter, right? That blocks out the blue light. That's something that we should be wearing um, mm -hmm. an hour or two before you go to sleep. Avoid using the phone at least an hour before you go to sleep because yeah. once again, the blue light, it shines. And what happens is your body believes that it's still daytime. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's when, you know, when, when your body believes it's daytime, you don't produce enough something called melatonin. See, melatonin is produced when we're ready to go to bed. That's why people who take melatonin replacement, you know, um, in the long run, it's not the best for you. You can't have it in the long run. In the short term, yeah, it could work. But mm -hmm. in the long run, you're not supposed to do it. You're supposed to fix whatever the problem is that's preventing yeah, you from producing cost. melatonin. Mm -hmm. Now, right. the other thing is that we should stay hydrated throughout the day. We should stay very, very well hydrated. And also, we should be sleeping and waking up around the same time each day because our cycles matter. Like See, your body the clock. cycle of our body matters quite a bit because mm -hmm. when we look at what we're doing, if we sleep and wake up at different cycles throughout the day, it actually makes everything worse mm -hmm. because we're always changing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we sleep and wake up in the same cycle, every day, our circadian rhythm. The key is with circadian rhythms is you want to make sure you're sleeping and waking up at the same time every single day. Because mm -hmm. if you are waking up, and that's why when people ask, hey, Dr. Tam, do you wake up the same time on weekends as well? I said, I try to. Mm -hmm. If I wake up, I'll tell you this, if I wake up past six, it's already too late. I feel like half my day is gone already. Yeah. So my normal wake up time is 4.50. Mm-hmm. If I wake up a little later, it's 5.30, right? Okay. 4.50 to 5.30, that's my, that's my rhythm. I sleep between 9.15 to 9.45. That's okay. my rhythm. See, once in a while, I get thrown off and it just throws me, the, throws me off. Oh, because imagine if I go to sleep at 10 and I wake up at 4.50 or 4.30, now I'm only getting six and a half hours of sleep. Exactly. Which then means my adrenals are going to be stressed, right? So I know these things because studies show that that's what happens, which now throws off cortisol levels, insulin levels, blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to throw everything out of whack. Everything out so, of whack. Everything. Yeah. So sleep is quite important. That's why it's one of the five keys to health. Mm-hmm. Of course. Right. Okay. And um, actually, those are all my questions about sleep, Dr. Tan. So um, thank you. And it's always amazing, um, an amazing experience talking to you. Um, we get a lot of valuable information and it's incredible to see how, you know, passionate you are about helping people get their lives back naturally. Right. And right. to our viewers, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and, you know, to get more life hacks. And until next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Rocky. Thanks, Doc. Bye. Bye-bye.